Puppetine Citizens, Baron is presenting me here for Puppet Science News. We've got a short one this week, so uh, let's hop into it. Uh, we're going to start off with the... The heck is that thing? I know you clicked in your video because you had the thing in it, but what is that? I know what you're thinking. I I'm with you. You've seen enough pornography to know where that's going. Yeah, no, well you're wrong. It's actually called a pyrosome. Yeah. Pyrosome. Uh, these are actually like a whole bunch, like a whole bunch of like, itty little creatures, like teeny weeny things, like smaller than me, right? They're like, not that way, you pervert. Smaller as in like full size. Jeepers. Good grief. Um, but anyway, these are a whole bunch of really small creatures and they're like suspended in like gunk. Yeah. So, uh, they're like, like slimy stuff. But they make like really long tubes and uh, they've been around for quite some time, but they're really cool. They're like, uh, like the Portuguese Man of War is actually one of those things, too. It's like a whole bunch of little organisms that work together to make a real one. Like, a big one, not a real one. Stupid English. It's hard. Okay, but, uh, yeah. Not hentai. Giant creature made of little tiny ones. Yeah, they get to be huge, too. So, uh, there's your answer. You can click on something else now. Okay, bye. Okay, all the cool people have uh, are gone, the cool people are left. Yeah. All that's cool, folks. We're going to continue on with some more stuff. How about that? How's about that for a weird tongue? Yeah, it's called geographic tongue. Scientists are trying to figure out what exactly is causing it. It was first, uh, first recorded of happening like 130 years ago. But uh, no idea really what causes it. But uh, they're studying the geometric shapes and stuff that cause uh, it to go around. Like what, there's like spirals and bits and there's like other things. Look okay, at continents. Yeah. It's pretty cool. So I uh, take a look at that. Geographic tongue. Learns out new every day. That's the big one there. Oh, and I have bad news for uh, Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen. Yep, your plans for world domination have been thwarted. Yeah. See those twin guys? We can tell the difference between them. Genetically. So all that DNA evidence that is normally inadmissible because, uh, you know, twins. Um, yeah. We figured it out. It's actually a new technique where they take uh, I information like uh, parts of genes that are turned off and on in specific people. Well, uh, because of environmental features, well, like factors, not features, F-words are hard today. Um, turns out that these, uh, these, these markers, these genetic markers that are turned off and on in various different people can tell the difference between twins. Yeah. So take that twin trying to commit crimes and take over the world. We're on to you. You can't escape now. Okay. Uh, I know some really, like, other, like, weird questions. More mysteries of the universe that we're solving. Well, the natural world today, anyway. Um, what happens to a hummingbird when you put it in a wind tunnel? Yeah, I mean, we don't really think about these. Um, I see them all the time. My grandmother has, like, a, a bird feeder right there. Like a little, like, flowery thing. They come and hang out at it. They hover. All that stuff. Yeah. Anyway, um, what happens when you, like, like, how do they cope with wind gusts? I mean, it's really hard to tell. I mean, these things are so amazing creatures. They're so super fast, and they, they're able to hover, and they, they beat, beat their wings weird. Well, it turns out that they're actually able to, like, even, like, flap backwards and forwards and up and down and then figure eight motions to keep themselves stable. But beyond that, if they get wet, like if it starts raining, I mean, they can't just not eat. They have to consume their own weight in food every day or they die. Yeah. So it turns out that uh, when, when they get wet, they shake like a dog. You know. <laughs> They do that while they're flying. That's amazing. It's incredible. No idea. Yeah. So how about that? How do hummingbirds stay dry? They pretend they're little tiny hovering dogs. Pretty neat. It's like the Jetsons. <coughs> Thanks, George. Okay. Um. Oh, one more thing. Uh, this is kind of crazy. Look at this word. Look at it. What would you say that word is pronounced as? It's a mystery. I'll let you try. No, that wasn't it. It's called a coelacanth. Yeah, coelacanth. Pardon the lisp. Anyway, this is a living fossil. You can see by the picture there, that, that's actually something that hasn't changed in, we reckon, 400 million years. Yeah, these are still being fished up in Africa. Figure that one out. And they're now looking for them in Indonesia. 
They find a few. They're actually setting up a research facility to uh, find them there and study them more. Because uh, there's all sorts of really neat things we can learn from something that hasn't changed in that bloody long. So cool. I'm a big fan of that. So, the coelacanths. Fun to look at. Damn near impossible to pronounce. Stupid word. Okay. Continuing on, the last thing we have for today is... Einstein was wrong. I know your science is all a lie. Einstein was wrong. Everybody mourned his loss. No, actually, seriously. He wasn't a big fan of uh, the quantum mechanics theory of uh, physics and all that shenanigans. Well, it turns out that uh, some scientists have actually, like, they've determined that he was wrong when it comes to quantum entanglement. That's when there are two separate... Like, two completely separate molecules, or like, well, not molecules, but like, subatomic particles, that are actually connected together. Yeah. So this is the, uh, Griffith University's, uh, people, they have figured this out. And, uh, turns out that what they did, they were able to separate a photon into two parts. And then when they tried to measure it in one lab, the other lab couldn't detect it. But, if they measured it in the f second lab, the first lab couldn't detect it. Yeah, after they split this thing up. So it turns out that uh, these things are indeed entangled. Einstein was wrong. Everybody panic. Ah! Okay, no, seriously. All these stories, of course, are brought to you by iFileScience.com. So thanks, iFileScience.com, for existing and uh, having the source for all my awesomeness of science variety. And, of course, if you like this stuff, subscribe up there. Keeps me in business. Thank you very much. Bye, run out. You're the chocolatier. I don't know.